One of the tricky things that can happen is you set up a new deduction in the system or even a new benefit code. You know, you started using a new health insurance plan and you've got those set up. Or maybe an employee has a new garnishment that they just are now starting. Um, and you go and run your payroll, um, build checks, calculate checks, and you're not seeing that deduction come out at all. Um, so there's a few different areas that we'd want to look at to verify that everything's set up correctly so that that deduction would be ready to go. Um, so the first place to look is at the deduction code itself. So if you go into deduction maintenance, um, obviously you'd pull up the employee and the specific code you're dealing with. Uh, the first place to look is this start date field. So as long as this start date is um, within the pay period that you're running, then that deduction would be eligible to come out. So just be aware of that, that that, that can um, affect it. Um, the other thing to look at is this checkbox for transaction required. Um, it's Usually if you're marking that, you know, you're familiar with the functionality, but just to be aware that that means that the deduction isn't going to happen automatically. It's going to require you to enter a transaction through payroll transaction entry in order for that deduction to come out. Um, this functionality can be really helpful if you're going to have a deduction that changes week to week, um, you know, or maybe it's, um, you know, like a, a meal plan deduction or something that's where the employee, the amount changes based on how much the employee utilized. So you can do that transaction required where you have to actually go in and set the amount each week. But just be aware if you have that marked, it's not going to automatically come out through your normal deduction process. Um, the other area that can affect um, usually not new deductions, but maybe an older one, if you ever set a maximum amount on the deduction, that'll actually stop it from automatically processing if that maximum has been met. So there's a pay period maximum amount, which would really only apply if you're doing your deduction as like a percent of wages and you want to stop at a certain amount. So say I want to take 5% of their wages up to a maximum of $25. You can set that pay period maximum and that's fine. But if you ever set a calendar year maximum or a lifetime maximum, um, the system is going to go and look at the summary information for that deduction and that employee and see has that employee met that maximum um, for either the specific calendar year or for their lifetime. If it has, that deduction is not going to come out. So that's another place that I've seen uh, people get tripped up is that, you know, they maybe set a lifetime maximum at some point and now they're using that same deduction code again. Um, if that maximum's on there, it's not going to allow that deduction to keep going. Um, so those are three areas right in the deduc deduction maintenance that you want to keep your eyes open for. Um, the other area that sometimes gets people, especially with new deductions that are added, is when you go to your payroll build, um, if you have a default ID that you use on a regular basis, make sure that you uh, check out your include deductions window and either you have all selected or if you're only doing specific ones, make sure you include that new deduction code um, in your selected deductions. So sometimes it's just that little thing that uh, gets missed and causes that deduction to not come out. Um, same process with benefits. If you set up a new benefit, make sure that it's included in the build here. Um, so then one other thing.